Welcome back, beautiful souls. Uh, we are continuing this series on the Wheel of Emotions. Last week, if you didn't catch it, um, was on sad and everything in this section. So today we are going to dive into fear. Are you ready? So just hearing we're about to talk about fear might get you feeling tense. It might make you nervous. It might bring up some uncomfortable stuff that you want to run from, but hang in there, right? We're just going to talk about vocabulary and how having an expansive vocabulary can actually let us be more intentional and clear with our word choice and how we paint the canvas of our life. So stick around. My name's Annie Henderson. I'm a life coach here in North Texas, and we are about to dive into a multi-part series on this chart this graph right here so hang in if you haven't seen inside out the the animated uh movie the cartoon um check it out because they're one of these characters there's anger there's fear there's surprise there's this one says happy there's joy there's sadness there's disgust and it's hilarious and so powerful as um animations tend to be right? Sometimes they look like they're for kids, but they're really, really powerful for adults if you pay attention. So let's dive in. We're going to go step by step with fear. So we use this word fear a lot. Let me know in the comments, how often are you thinking about fear? And uh, even a lot of times with my clients, I will break things down into just simplifying it to, are you doing this from a place of love? Are these thoughts of love? Or are they thoughts based off of fear? Because a lot of time, if you're in your ego and you're worried about what you should or shouldn't do, those are fearful thoughts. They're not facts, it's not love, it's what you think you should do to try to please or make someone else happy. You're trying not to step on any toes, you don't wanna upset anyone out of fear. So besides just fear, there look at all these other words and this is a limited, there's only so many spots, there's many more. So if uh, there's some that pop into your head that you don't hear on here, let us know in the comments so we can discuss and expand our vocabulary even more. So we'll start right here. And the first one is humiliated, right? I feel humiliated. And that's a pretty intense one. So if you watched our last video, um, a lot of times with my clients, I will talk about the intensity of words, right? I use the word frustrated a lot. Some people use pissed off and furious, and those are more intense words, which create um, a reaction inside our body. So it's important to be aware of the words we're using and if it's the accurate word. You're not limited to fear and anger and or humiliation. But it is important to know that way you can process it and understand it more fully and move on. Next is rejected. Whew. Now, sometimes it's an assumption, right? Sometimes we might feel rejected, but that's not what actually happened. <laughs> sometimes we may have a crush on somebody and we feel rejected when they don't love us back, even though Oh, maybe they're already taken or maybe they're um, they like someone else completely or they're just not interested. And instead of being OK with everyone has choices and options, we can tend to take it personally. If you haven't read the book, The Four Agreements, go check it out. I also have a YouTube video about the four agreements and taking things personally. So dive into both of those. <clears throat> Next is submissive. Hmm. Do you feel submissive? Some of us, when we talk about our families, are as, as adults, we're still in this submissive role to our parents, to where we still try to earn their approval and win their love. And if their parent says something, then they have to do it or they should do it. They don't want to displease their parents. Instead of, oh my goodness, look, we're both adults now don't have to be submissive to the other. You're not under their roof, although sometimes you might be, you might still be, but learning to have those boundaries. So if boundaries are something that you are needing to work on, or if you're finding yourself still in this 
submissive role to your parents, even though you're an adult, um, reach out. If you want to work with a life coach, uh, go to AnnieMHenderson.com and we can set up a consultation call at a time that works for you. And we can work on this because it does not still need to be this way. Okay, next up is insecure. Hmm, are you just a little insecure? Is there some uh, low self-esteem? Is this something that you can work on? I'm insecure because I'm new at my job. I'm insecure because I'm new to dating women. What are you insecure about? And notice, insecure feels like a very different level than rejected and humiliated. The intensity level, right? These are all at different sections. Anxious, we use that one a ton. And some of you have uh, anxiety uh, disorder, right? You have a diagnosis. And some of you are nervous and you call it anxiousness, right? There's lots of different ways we use these words. Notice if you're using them for yourself or to make yourself more riled up, even more anxious or fearful or scared. So scared is the last one right here. I'm scared. How often do we use that? And do we use it as an excuse to stop? Or can we be scared and still do something? I've had some people on my TikTok lives that are scared to sign up for a consultation call. And I have some that are scared and they sign up anyway. <laughs> Right? So you have two choices. You can have both of these things. I can feel discomfort. I can feel insecure while I'm in the first year of my job and still be fine. So let's spread out to even more of these words. Ridicule. Right? Are you fearful because you were ridiculed once in this kind of situation? Or maybe it's some PTSD or maybe um, something very similar. Maybe your last relationship. You're fearful to go out and give love another try because maybe you felt ridiculed, or maybe it's a parental thing. Disrespected, disrespected. Are you fearful to go and talk to this person because you were disrespected uh, by that person or someone in a similar situation? Alienated, okay? Do you feel alienated? And with a lot of these, I feel this way, and what can I do about it? You could say, I'm alienated, so I, I give up. That's it for me. Or you could say, I feel alienated. What am I going to do about this? Right? One, you could reach out to a coach. Two, you could find different people. Right? If you're in a uh, support desert <laughs> and you don't feel like you can open up or be your authentic self or be vulnerable with the people that you surround yourself with, it might be finding an online community where there you have um, ways to get to know people that are maybe outside of your bubble, people who have known you from birth and that know you as a certain way. Sometimes it's a way to start fresh and be around people who have similar goals, who have similar dreams, who have things in common with you that maybe your current environment and bubble don't. Next up is inadequate. Ooh, are you feeling inadequate because someone said something to make you feel that way? Or are you feeling inadequate because your mind? Are you feeling it and thinking it and reinforcing it over and over and over again? And is it true? Is it something that I would agree with? <laughs> For those of you who know me, would the people around you think that you're inadequate? And sometimes they don't know. We've talked about crabs in a bucket before and how a single crab can get out of the bucket by itself. But if a crab is in a bucket with other crabs and it starts to crawl out, these other crabs are going to grab its leg and pull it back in. Ah, how many of you have family or friends that are like that? They're, they believe they're doing it out of place of love. They have a lot of fear. They're worried about you. They don't know what's out there. Their mindset is this big while yours is starting to expand. It's like the Croods. <laughs> love, love referencing that movie. If you haven't seen another animation, of course, but it's about this cave family who um, are used to living and surviving and they've done a great job surviving, uh, but that's it. So can you resonate with that? Are you just simply surviving instead of living your life? 
or even thriving. There is more than just recycling the same day over and over again with the same fears and the same doubts and worries with your self-love and self-esteem way down here. This next one is worthless. This is a big one that I hear a lot. If you feel like you are worthless, if you feel, feel like you are not enough, you are not alone. Uh, what I want you to do, if you have a dry erase marker and you can, or a lipstick or anything, you can write on your mirror, I am enough. And even though you might not feel it, right? If you have a kid, even more reason to do it, right? If you need to convince yourself that you're doing it for your kiddo and then you just get the perks of reading it with them, even that will have an impact on you because you're just so not used to that. Everyone watching this video right now has worth. You are enough as you are. Yes, can we get better and grow? Yes, I hope to never stop growing. But there is no scale, no one out there. And the quickest way, <laughs> and if you've heard me before, if you've been around me on my TikTok lives or in coaching, that you know this is the easy switch to see if you truly believe um, that people can be unworthy. And that's look around you, right? So turn your sights away from yourself and think of your family and friends and, and let me know who else is not worthy. Who else is worthless? And what typically happens when you ask yourself or I ask you these questions is you don't, you get out of your ego and all the fears up here and you go into your gut and your intuition and you say, oh, no, no one's worthless. And if no one is worthless, then that means you have value, you have worth. Next up is inferior. Comparison is the thief of joy. If you choose to search for people that are um, superior uh, and that you are inferior, you will... I can find many people that are superior to me, but that's not what we do here. That is not the goal. That will help you in no way. Now, if you're uh, competitive and it's for fun and it lights you up to like compare and compete and it makes you want to try harder, great. But for a lot of my clients, or for a lot of people pleasers, uh, that's a big struggle. It's just unnecessary. So to, to even have this vocabulary, right? Inferior. Now, if it's a product you're talking about, like, oh, this is an inferior product because it's not as quality as this one. But people, no. So notice if that word, if you're applying it to yourself and realize, again, the comparison is the thief of joy. Okay, next up is inadequate. <laughs> they repeated that one. <laughs> Worried worried. Notice, where does that fall on the, on the, um, on the intensity scale? Is it up there with ridiculed and humiliated and rejected? Nope. It's kind of, it's a lot lower. I'm worried. So I, I definitely approve of worried, right? These are all great. None of them are, are bad or wrong, but with awareness, if you're going to be an intentional Try to use worried in place of some of these big ones just to see what it does. Just be curious. Experiment around. See what happens when you use worried instead of some of these. Next is overwhelmed. That's a huge one. People pleasers are typically overwhelmed because if you're constantly worried about what everyone else around you thinks, you're going to be overwhelmed because you can't please everybody. Just like um, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, my favorite, and pizza. Guess what? Not everyone loves pizza. Not everyone loves Reese's. I don't even know if that's true. I think everyone does love them. But <laughs> um, my family, right? I'm the one that eats Reese's the most. They don't love them as much as I do. Uh, so if the most delicious candy in my mind <laughs> is not loved by everyone then we cannot expect to be able to please everyone. 
And if you have kids, would you expect your kid to have to please everyone? Otherwise, they're a failure or worthless. Not at all. So notice what in your life overwhelms you. Notice who in your life overwhelms you. And sometimes it might be the person. Sometimes it's the expectations that you are putting on yourself. Next up is frightened. So some of these are synonyms, right? Frightened, scared. Uh, what are you frightened of? So the recent YouTube I made about life being like a car and our dashboard lighting up and giving us little warning signs, little, yoo -hoo, pay attention. Um, notice what is making you feel frightened. Be curious. Don't be judgmental. See if you can take a step back and go, why does this frighten me? Is it just the fear of the unknown? Or is it something specific that I need to get out of my life? And lastly is terrified. Oh, that feels for me like a very intense word. I am terrified. And if I took a little kid and I repeatedly told them that something is terrifying every day of their life, they would probably be pretty anxious. So notice which of these words and notice their intensity level. How much are they um, impacting yourself when you're using certain high intensity words? I promise that you can make some tweaks and some adjustments if you are intentional. Of course, I recommend the book Atlas of the Heart by Brene Brown to really dive into to the meaning of certain words and the words we choose and how it impacts us. If you struggle with shame and vulnerability, Brene's books, uh, Netflix special, all of that can be such an amazing help. Let me know what your takeaway was from this video and stay tuned for the third set of this series next week. All right, next up is worthless. Whew, that is a big one. If you feel worthless or if you feel like you're not enough, you are not a noun. <laughs> Let me try that again. 